What's up, everybody? It's your boy Mars Ben here. And today I'm joined with the Mars Ben crew to do an official review of Remnant 2. And we've had a lot of gameplay of this. It's a very fun game, very interesting. And a lot of people are comparing it to the Souls-like genre of other games like, like, like Bloodborne and Elden Ring and Wolong Fallen Dynasty in that genre where it's a very difficult game, a lot of mechanics that get thrown in there. But this is a very unique one. And in this video, we're going to discuss the good, the bad, and in our final words, we're going to tell you our official rating and tell you whether you should buy this now, later, or not at all. So let's just jump right into it for the good. And when I'm thinking about the good, I think the best thing overall is the gunplay. I feel like the gunplay is very, very, feels very smooth. I feel like they did a very good job on really making the guns feel like really like crisp with shots. I feel like the movements are very smooth they're, they're not clunky. I feel like one of the problems that a lot of these like Bloodborne games can have is that if you feel kind of like bulky, like Bolong Fallen Dynasty was a bulkier game. Like when you think about comparing it to like Elden Ring or or others, it felt like you were like a box when you're moved and your hit ratio that you can get smashed by, by a monster or a boss was pretty broad. And I feel like this one actually it was pretty smooth. I thought they did a good job on the combat mechanics. There's 45 different guns that you can get. 36 melee weapons you can get um and i think that's a, just a wide array of things and, and the best part is you can upgrade them right and i think that's really the cool thing is a lot of different archetypes a lot of different groups that you can pick i mean in the very beginning you only have a selection of four uh, the gunslinger handler challenger medic but there's actually um they're not gonna say the hunter uh handler challenger medic and then they actually have a bunch of others uh a total of 10 archetypes with gunslinger summoner art alchemists uh, and uh, explorer engineer and invader these are all different ones that you can actually um gain and and uh, add on to um but overall like it's very smooth gameplay i like the gunplay of it um and the you know the combat just felt really really good here so that's kind of how i feel about this that's my most important good um but langelica what's your good here yeah i agree uh, you really nailed it the gameplay and gunplay was really smooth really fun and to add to some of the content also 18 armor sets so you get some of that gun get some of the armor sets and the upgrades of some of the mods that you can add um, to, to some of your weapons was really good. But I'm also going to add this music and environment. The music actually really slapped when we were playing during our co-op session, which was really strong in the environment. You mentioned, you know, a lot of people, whenever there's a difficult game, I don't like that everyone just goes right to, oh, it's an Elden Ring Soulsborne type game, right? But the environment felt like Bloodborne. It was dark. It was creepy. The monsters were well-designed. And so, like, I like the different environments and the music was also really strong. Bosses were pretty epic when we were playing this game. And this is a 15 to 20 hours game, but about 24 to 30 hours if you're doing side content. So pretty strong content in the environment was really good. Yeah, and Haki, what's your good here? Yes, you guys mentioned a lot, and I think there was a lot more good than bad, uh, which is definitely a positive when it comes to this game. Uh, I'm going to point to uh, the graphics. I thought the graphics in this game were very, very uh, well uh, done. And plus the bosses, like Langelica had said, the bosses were very fun and uh, they weren't easy. You know, some of these games that we've been playing the last couple times, uh, especially the ones on Game Pass, they've kind of been a little easy. These bosses were pretty hard. Uh, we, you know, we died a couple times, had to redo it, uh, but it was definitely a fun game to play with uh, your friends playing single player. Um, for me, it might, might have gotten boring a little bit, but uh, definitely playing with friends was uh, a key. Uh, but yeah, graphics and boss, uh, the, the bosses I thought were very well. Yeah, with 32 total bosses throughout the entire game. Um, and I know some world bosses, which are kind of like the bosses of the regions, um, they, you, they are, you can pick and choose which one you want to face for some of them. I know on uh, on stream we had picked a, and you should go check out our stream in the description below, but on, on stream we actually had chosen one of the two twin bosses and uh, obviously you you get different rewards for doing that and i think that's kind of the case for a lot of these different bosses picking and choosing and a lot of them are also secretive too like you don't you don't have to fight them to continue the game you can just you just happen upon them and all of a sudden you have a badass cutscene and you gotta go fight some monster that looks outrageous um and, and i think that's really the cool thing it's like that has that elden ring kind of concept where like you don't have to fight these guys to progress the story, but it only makes the battles more epic when you do. 
and you get a little side content with there as well um which is always a good thing for any of these types of games that are more like there's not even like necessarily an open world it's more like a section it's very similar to Wolong dynasty and it's how it's outlined where it's on areas not necessarily like an open landscape for you to go travel um but i really like the way that this worked well let's talk about we talk about the good let's talk about the bad and when i look at the bad i feel like one of the issues and I, this is it's really funny how with a souls like game the biggest struggle that all of them have and all the souls fans can they'll probably rip on me for saying this but a lot of times stories are never really open again sometimes it's it, the, the, the mystery of the game is to find out what's going on right and i think that's why a lot of like elden ring and other things like you investigating to find out the story and nothing wrong against that but when i looked at wolong dynasty one of the problems i had with that game was the story was not the best but they were so damn confusing on what's going on and it feels like remnant is falling in that same ballpark it feels like they copied the concepts of not really explaining really much of what's happening or why things are happening this way and they just leave you in a space of just confusion the entire time and there's not really a lot of like motivations for things going on like why the hell are we in this universe of these castles and then like 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 broken down London. Why are we here? What's going on here? It just feels like you're in the, you know, Doctor Strange, you know, multiverse of madness. And there's no reason for you doing that. Or why is this happening? Why, why, what's going on here? And I think that's the biggest negative I saw was because I liked the gunplay. I liked the combat. The bosses were fun. And all these things were great music, art style. All this was cool, right? But can you, can you explain to me what the hell's happening? Can I, can I understand why I'm fighting off against a bunch of goblins in London? What's happening here? And the landscapes were really cool because it gives you like some kind of like some interesting story aspects of them. Like the entire city is broken down. People are dead. They're frozen solid from turned to ash and all this stuff is happening. And why is this happening? What's going on here? Why am I here? What's, what's my goal of being in this particular place? And we literally had to show up and talk to like some old lady and her to explain something to me. And like, that was it. Like, yeah, okay, we're trying to find our friend, but what what the hell's going on here? Like, what's why, why, why is this happening, right? And I think that's kind of something that they really should have done a better job at least explaining that to me. And I feel like that was a negative. But Haki, what's a bad for you? What's one of the negative things you saw from this game? Yeah, I think you hit it uh, right on the head. Um, for me, it was just the actual in-game confusion of what to do. I mean, there were a few times where we beat major bosses or, you know, we completed a mission and we actually didn't know what to do. And we either had to look it up or kind of just retrace our steps almost and and try to find someone to talk to. I remember beating uh, one of the major bosses and all we had to do was just go back and talk to, uh, you know, the one of those twins to, you know, uh, uh, end the mission. And it took us 10 to 15 minutes after defeating the boss to figure out what to do. So I right, was just, just getting to the boss. Like, yeah, oh, just, wait, you just go right outside weird. the door, turn the knob and then you're go fight the other guy. And we're exactly. like, we're fine, trying to look for him and crap like that. It was, it just ended up being, you know, too much and, and too confusing. Uh, even with Volo and Dynasty, there was actually, you know, markers on the map that tell you where to go next. And this map, you know, this team just didn't have that. It was just a little too confusing. Yeah. Like, and even going along with that, and it, it, I think about even Elden Ring, right? You, the whole point is you go to a castle, like, generally everything's pretty straightforward. Like, once you get into an area like the castle where the boss is, it's like, you're at a checkpoint you gotta keep going forward until you get to the next checkpoint and you keep going forward to get the next checkpoint and within that level there's going to be side things that are, that are going on but generally you're going forward like the entire time and there's cut there's shortcuts and all that stuff but it's always been straight straightforward this is feels like it's not even near that so angelica what's your uh negative that you saw for this game yeah, I think you guys both nailed it. And we're pretty intense gamers, um, but for casual gamers, it probably would get very frustrating. And so just be aware for some of the casual gamers trying this out that there are markers on the map to tell you you haven't explored here, you've explored here. But, you know, there, there's one for objective, your next objective. And 
didn't show up for majority of the time we were played. So that's something to keep in mind. And I also, we have to acknowledge some of the bullet sharing or resource sharing was very frustrating during this game. Like, okay, you get the next handgun, you get the next long gun ammo. But to me, I have to acknowledge some of the performance issues and the PC universe has had worse performance issues. Um, we played this on console and even I had a couple of times where there was some rendering and there was some clunkiness. Um, staggering is what, you know, you usually call it with, with some of the movements. And I at one point i had a, a glitch where i couldn't crouch and we had to go to a place where i needed to crouch and i had to leave the server and come back in it wasn't prominent but we do have to acknowledge there are some of those negatives attached with what you guys described exactly right and with all that being said let's jump into our final verdicts and when i'm thinking about remnant i really think remnant 2 i really think they did a lot of good things especially when it comes to the gameplay mechanics the epicness of the music like the music was very surprisingly good, right? And it really got you in the in that mode, in that emotional state where like, yeah, a boss battle can be really good, but if you don't have the right tunes to go with it, it really just dampens how epic it could be. And I made a whole video on Elden Ring Wise Legendary, go check that out over here. Um, but I kind of explain that concept that a lot of people don't realize how much music plays in the role. And Remnant did a great job with that. And a lot of other aspects that they did well in, but the negatives, seem like little like tiny things that you could just make this game a lot better if you fix them like the bugs or just direction telling us giving us a basic story like it, it could be basic and i'd still feel like this would be a lot better score wise i feel like me personally i'm gonna give this game an 8.3 out of 10 i feel like it's a it's a good game i think it's fun to play i would say to buy it now i think it's still a fun experience to play right now in this moment even with the bugs and even little things like that i think it's still a fun time i think highly recommend you go play with people i don't know how well it's going to be if you play by yourself um but i know that playing with us three it was a fun experience and i feel like if you have a crew with you go and do that um i think metacritic and uh, metacritic has this game roughly around an 8 80 um and a high 70s for like playstation but like um, overall, I think it's it's an it's around that 8.3 for me. I feel like it's a good game, fun experience, but it could be better. So, Hockey, what's your final verdict here? Yeah, so I'm close to you. I have it at a 7.9, um, and the only reason is just because of that. Uh, the the negative is, you know, that story kind of really bugged me out a little bit, uh, not knowing what to do. If I was alone, I probably would have gotten a little frustrated. Might have been putting the game down for a little bit, just not knowing where to go exactly. But uh, like I said before, the good definitely outweigh the bad. So the gun game, the graphics, the boss fights, definitely all uh, very well done. So uh, definitely a cool game. If you got some friends to play with, I would definitely pick it up. So I'm at a buy now as well uh, for 50 bucks, not that bad. So definitely take a look at it. Uh, definitely a cool game. Yeah, and so Langella Kill, what was your final verdict here? Yeah, I'm at a buy now as well, and uh, and Hakeem made a good point. The price point, right? The standard edition at forty nine ninety nine, um, is a pretty good par price point with the content that it gets and the gameplay outweighs the negatives that we described in my opinion i think this is a blast to play as a co-op game um, i'm at an 8.4 so very close to you guys i'm at a buy now um, when you got some people this could be a fun game that you can play for a while with a with a group of people what do you think about remnant 2 do you like what you saw let us know what you think in the comments below if you like this type of content make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content until next time this is mars man signing off peace out guys